And joining us now is senior advisor to Benjamin Netanyahu and former ambassador to the U.K., Mark Regev. Um, ambassador, thank you for being with us. I know you've said that this is up to Hamas right now, whether to extend this ceasefire, that the deal is already on the table. They just need to come up with more hostages that they can release. What do you, what do you know about um, their numbers and who they've been able or what they've been able to track down? Now, as we speak, we understand there are 25 people who fit into the category of women and children, at least. And as a result, uh, it's possible to extend the ceasefire to additional days if uh, Hamas continues to release people. It's their call. The, we agreed to this special humanitarian pause precisely to get our hostages out. Hamas has more Israeli hostages. I, I think the total number of hostages they have is 159. Keep releasing them. And the pause continues. What can you tell us about what the government has been able to, to figure out about the three hostages who Hamas says have died, the, the mother and her two small children, her two small boys? So obviously we, we fear. We fear for these uh, three individuals, the 10-month-old, the, ten, ten the four-year-old uh, and the mother. Uh, they were kidnapped on October 7th. Uh, they were Hamas's responsibility. Uh, Hamas is responsible for anything that happened to them. Uh, but this just shows the depravity of who we're dealing with. Who kidnaps a nine-month-old baby? Who kidnaps a four-year-old? Uh, the, these people are fanatics. They are brutal. And it is extremely difficult, even when you agree to something like we've done on this uh, hostage pause. Uh, they are... They are they are extremely difficult to work with. Every time, it's like pulling teeth. It's painful. You hope you get a good result in the end, but it, it, it's, it's really difficult. Hamas has been wrong before about um, hostages that they've said died that did not die. Is there, a, um, is there a sense in the Israeli government that this could be misinformation, psychological warfare? Of course, that's always a possibility. And also, we haven't had airstrikes for five days now because of the, the humanitarian pause to get the hostages out. And so they're telling us something that apparently happened a while ago. And so why didn't they tell us then? Mm. But of course, we can't exclude the possibility that Hamas has killed these people. We have to, we have, we're, we're still looking into this information. If you want to be extremely hopeful, I, I can uh, embrace what you've said, Katie, that there are, there have been occasions in the past where they've said people have died and they haven't died. But I, I don't want to be overly optimistic. Anyone who is being held by Hamas, one has to fear for their safety. There is a lot of reporting that the West Bank is reaching a boiling point right now. The U.N. Special Coordinator for Middle East Peace Process has said that it's getting worse rapidly. He's warning that the violence on both sides is bad, but specifically settler violence toward Palestinians. What are the Israelis doing to calm the situation there and not ignite things further? So what you have on the West Bank is you have... Hamas and other terror cells across the West Bank. And what do they want to do, Katie? They want to sort of duplicate uh, the violence that Hamas committed on October 7th uh, and uh, go into Israeli communities and just butcher people. Uh, and we've been preempting. Our, our, our security services and our armed forces have been uh, going energetically out there to, to neutralize these terrorist threats before they can commit crimes. And uh, we've been arresting people in the middle of the night when they haven't agreed to come quietly. There have been firefights. But our goal is to keep a, a stability on the West Bank. We don't want to see an escalation there. What about Hamas the Hamas and the other terrorists want... I said, any violence, vigilante violence, we oppose. But we've been very strong in denouncing it. We will continue to do so. We arrest people involved in this sort of violence. It's unacceptable. No one can break the law in Israel, no matter who they are. Ambassador Mark Regev, thank you very much for joining us. Um, just one more question. Do you have any idea when, when the rest of the hostages that are expected today will be released? Usually it's happened by now. Well, well that's one of the things I talked about, having teeth pulled, and it's always painful. Yeah. Uh, you never know. And we're never confident until we see them, first of all, delivered to the Red Cross, and finally, when we see them on Israeli soil. And until then, it, it's not done till it's done, because... You know, we're always concerned that Hamas is going to play games. We're always concerned that Hamas is deliberately psychological issues and psychological warfare against the Israeli people and torturing 
the families of the people that hope to get out tonight. Ambassador Mark Regev, thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. Come on.